Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Hi, it's that time again, and it's good to be back on The Advocate. So allow me to welcome you to a packed hour of exposition and analysis. The rubber hits the road with my advocacy, as I point to the fact that the root cause of our problems stems from a design failure. Ekene goes heart to heart on advocacy and calls for a timeout with her homegirls. Surely we men are not excluded from this cozy tether tether, Ekene, or are we? Sandra stays with the women theme as well and takes us down a historical path in order to bring us up to speed on the importance of the International Women's Day. Chuka, on the other hand, is taking us on the rather hot, if you like, topic this week, which is, as you guessed it, we'll be talking about Emma's dethronement, banishment, and the intrigues behind it all. It reads like a movie script, Abby. He's even called it the Game of Thrones. Bola <laughs> nails it in a manner of speaking as he drives home the real cost of a volatile, global economy in the light of the coronavirus, plummeting oil prices, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we'll be keeping it topical and grilling. Well, kind of. So see you after the break. A better quality of life is often the outcome of deliberate great design. But here we have a design to fail issue. So let me just kind of break it down a little bit. So if you visit Abuja regularly. I mean, you have to go on the Abuja Airport Expressway into town. But this is where I talk about this design problem. It's curious how, when we look at it, how design can really kill us. Poor design, that is. This is perhaps the most important motorway in Nigeria's capital city. Yet this multi-billionaire expressway, as well as the ring roads around the city, features some of the most bizarre and perhaps dangerous ramps, exit lanes, and intersections you ever find in any major motorway anywhere in the world. In fact, I've never seen anywhere else where this, you find this design problem. From the city gate to the airport bypass, I count five dangerous U-turns on the right lane. That's on the expressway, six lane expressway, there are U-turns, which is traditionally the speed lane. So imagine this, you're driving on the speed lane and then suddenly someone's making a U-turn from the other side of the road onto the speed lane. And this is really a, a, a danger waiting to happen and accidents happen there frequently, in fact, almost every day. So. This is the problem. Around the ring road as well, you find ramps and exit lanes that are less than 10 meters at some points, merging into service lanes and vice versa. If there was ever thinking of a design problem, this is where you find it. You find accidents every time. Many years later, despite the fact that the Federal Road Safety Commission, the Ministry of Works the, um, and, and other agencies, no one has ever tried to fix this problem. So the problem remains, the design errors remain as they are. At best, what you find will be Federal Road Safety officers standing stationed at each of those points as if they're trying to, how do I put it, almost um, make uh, the, the design problem um, fix it by just standing there. You can't fix that problem by just standing there. And they can, they're not preventing the accidents because the accidents keep occurring. Well, let me put it this way. And I've been lucky to travel quite a bit. I'm yet to see anywhere where you find on a, on a speed lane or on an expressway where you find U-turns. The proper thing to do is to have flyovers, as we call them here. And the failure of design is expensive, not just in time wasted, accidents that can be avoided, but the lives that may be lost to such manifestly horrible designs. I suppose people will say, you know what, America, you quit ranting. Let's just thank God that we have even more terrible roads, because that's what people will say. Um, but the truth is, which I think we should not fail to call out this big problem. And the fact of the matter is that this design flaws um, not just causes us money, um, loss of lives, but it's really, really a big shame, especially in a city like Abuja. 
So again, we find brand new public buildings that have been constructed without a care for the physically challenged. So you, you have people who walk into buildings, and these are public buildings, and no one thinks about whether the person is, um, has a, a problem and whether how you have access, or when even there's a, there's a tragedy where the, um, the exit doors. So we have a serious problem. And the importance of design lies in solving problems, and we're not solving problems. So for me, this is really my advocacy. And I think it's time we begin to value the importance of design as a measure of the quality of life that we seek. So guys. Mm -hmm. I just, um, uh, go on. That's your, uh, your yeah. guru. Yeah, <laughs> no, I haven't, uh, I haven't been to Abuja for a while, but I know what you're talking about because I, 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 I saw the construction as it was, as yeah. it was coming. Emerging. Or emerging, exactly. And um, yeah, I remember thinking that this must be the most confused, sort of like spaghetti-like thing I've ever seen. Any, I've never seen anything anywhere like mm. that. And so to think that it has been completed, or rather it has gone to a much higher stage of... It's completed. Whatever, it's because, completed. It's uh -huh. completed. No, what, 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 why I didn't say completed was that I'm sure they will come back again and do more things to that road, you know. Um, contract I'm, wise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, there's money to be made the more you do. Mm. But um, I, I, I don't know who's designing these things. Yeah. Because if we know we can't design locally, then let's get people who can to do it for us and then we implement it. I don't think there's much shame in that if, if we really cannot design um, roads. Um, uh, like you're saying, the distances you have before you have a merger, yeah. there are all sorts of things I'm that you sure have to that's... consider. Yeah, everything. And the U-turn thing, yes, I, I noticed that when they were building it. And I thought they were there for... Uh, temporary, yeah, thing. Yeah. yes, but it's, but it's there permanently. No, 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 no. I'm even saying because he says if we can't design it, I believe we can. And you know, because the point I wrote down when you said no one thinks, no one thinks, and, and by correlation, no one cares. Yeah. And we're capable of thinking, we're capable of design is just really applying your mind to the practicalities of using that actual mm -hmm. thing you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, in the past, we've talked about homegrown solutions. Homegrown solutions starts with thinking, not just adopting. Um, ideas from outside right. and applying it indiscriminately. So we can think, we can do it. Um, people have been impressed with the way we've handled the coronavirus in Lagos, particularly because we've had technocrats at the helm. You know, people have yep. been commending both the commissioner for um, health and the man at the, he at the helm of the... the CDC guy. Uh, uh, because they're thinking. So what does it take just to get a, a team of people who are actually there to do the work and then you arm yourself with people who have the skill? We have these things. You know, see, Chuka, uh, we do <coughs> have it. I kinda, uh, uh, the, the, the fact that... Uh, uh, FRIC guys are always at that point. Mm -hmm. Show that someone already noted that there's a problem. Yeah. My, my, my question then yeah. even, what happened to, are you, are you trying to tell me that we don't have experts on ground who are, you know, towing that road, oh, yeah, okay. towing okay. that road on a daily basis and no one seems to have pointed it out until this point. No one is talking about it. No one is saying anything or you know, thinking about the reconstruction. I mean, Look, when you say, you see, when you say mm. we can do it, yes. I disagree. Okay. Let me tell you, it's very simple. I remember first year in architecture course when I was in UCL, and we had a landscape design area uh, elective, and um, they were talking about when you plant things on the median in a double carriage kind of road. Mm. And so sometimes when you're on Kingsway and you want to do a U-turn, you notice that the plants are disturbing yeah, you from you see. seeing who's coming because there are distances you leave you can't plant to the end of the, of the yeah. island or the median, and then there are heights you should even plant to, to be able to allow people to see. Now, where are the experts in Nigeria no, no. who don't know no, no, that no. plants matter? They, 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 they haven't Nigeria applied their know But you know it, you're in Nigeria. Yes, yes. Yes. So, so, so we, we have, have the expertise. Like, yeah. 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 Something has made us bring so, them. Because someone said, yeah, exactly. well, someone said on The Advocate that Benin City, we had street lights. In Benin City, yeah. wasn't it? Wasn't all you? Uh, yeah, I said, it, yeah, I said and it. I was like, 16, yeah, 16, yeah, and we had both. Century, yeah. So we oh, were yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to yeah, say yeah, we yeah, thought once yes, upon a time, but yes. somehow we've now become zombified by maybe oh the the people outside the Western world know better than us. So we just we don't think anymore. So for me, that's the crux of the matter for me. Well, it's not that we can't think. We've chosen not to think. Or I like what Balon said because you find the the the. the police and road safety guys stationed at those U-turns, meaning they know there's a problem. They know there's a problem. Yeah. So why are we not fixing, fixing the, the problem. problem? We can, and I still maintain that we can. Why did we even have it in the first place? Yeah. Exactly. So, so well, we, well, it is here already. <laughs> so, but who can we complain <laughs> to now already. that we're doing this advocacy? Is there nobody we can? Because it's the Federal Ministry of Works. Okay, so if we now you know send what it is. our so, complaints in, mm -hmm. is it likely that we'll get something going What on? it is is basically the flyovers 
are yeah. very expensive. Yeah, to build, yeah. When they looked at the cost of the road with seven flyovers, they thought, we can't do this road. At this point, if we did the seven flyovers. Oh, wow. So they just said, put the U-turns. Oh, wow. How much yeah, is it going to yeah. And that's it. So they're ready to take a risk. Just put the road safety guys there and cut this thing down oh. and let's have a project. So it's a, it's that a money, explains it a money so the road safety. Safety. It, is, it is money. Yes, it is the money. Safety that's, that's the main man there. It's sort of like a substitute <laughs> for the flyovers. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so it's like we know you're going to... But then, you know... You know, what is a bit like what um, they're, they're saying in England now where... Uh, just no, sorry to digress, but the corona thing, they, they've accepted that the coronavirus is going to spread. So what they've done is, let's work now on a situation where England yeah, is going great. to be heavily, you know, infected. So what they're doing is they're saying, look, cut the flyovers, we're going to have a problem. No, but then what about <laughs> the cost of human lives? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. No, then we, 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 put, we, no, we will put killed. road safety yeah, there. Well, yeah, it's die. very dangerous for them as well. People are still dying, right? People die, yeah. So yeah. we need to, at some point, value the life of people <laughs> yeah. more than, and that, that for me is the problem. I think we always put money first. This is where we're, mm. this is where the thinking gets corrupted. Because if you don't put money as your end result, then hopefully, if you put people and service, but first, that's the value is that it's a public service. Yes. It's public mm -hmm. money. Yes. So you do not count it. I mean, this is not an uh, airline planes dropping out of the sky kind mm. of problem. Mm. This is a, something you can fix. You yes. can say With a little more you drive a little bit, you drive another six, eight kilometers. So instead of having seven, yes. let's have three. Correct. So you can drive yes. further and make mm. the turn yeah. and go back. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, for, now, now, for, now. Yeah. for now, let's rather than that. having, you know, Five. just... Yeah, I, th yeah. I think you mentioned yeah. something about the disability as well. Yeah. You know the way the way buildings yes. are designed without yes. provision for someone who might be on a wheelchair, wheelchair. And, and, and all of that. Maybe we need certain legislations. I, I think the the American many. Disability we Act um, had a way it impressed it on Americans that you just have to do this, you just have to do this. So. No, nobody goes to pack on a place that is left for and it is an American. We do have we do have a so disability does it, act. Does it, and yes, does it, it, it states yes, yes it says do. that you we cannot do. erect a new building without, without provision. So yeah. I think that the issue we have is enforcement? that this enforcement yes. and is one. Like us and it. the old buildings that have been in existence, existence they yes. have not renovated to include the new, Correct. you know, Correct. the provisions yeah. of the All new have acts. Not been, yeah, yes, that, that's just the problem. Yes. If, if you're talking about policy, the policy is there. Mm. Yes. That says you cannot erect so, so, a new so building. So someone has to do an audit of the, 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 oh. the how, um, how should I put it, um, how those buildings meet the they're new criteria. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. right. Yes. 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 I mean, even going back yes. to the, uh, I don't know how much time we have on this, but even going back to the issue of money being the prerequisite, you know, the, the reason we do things and why it corrupts the way we do mm. things. I know recently that it was in the news that they're asking the SARS officials to up there what they, the money they bring in. Mm. So, and, and they know that by, by, you know, by imports, these people are now going to go on the roads and be harassing, harassing us more. People to, to so they don't there. care, but just bring yeah. the money in. I'm, I'm like, you know, can't you see that you shouldn't be giving them a, a kind of benchmark of money to be brought in anyway well so here we are you know what they say you get what you plan for after the break i can ask making plans for some she me time is she being sexist well let's find out after the break five panelists five topical issues no holds barred for me it's not knowledge that's lacking it's that greed it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Not at all, Emeka. Sometimes we need to stand alone to stand strong together. Go figure. Last week's Sunday was International Women's Day, and so still in that vibe, I want to have a tete-a-tete -tete with my homegirls. So I'm talking woman to woman. I remember my early encounter of the Niger Women's ASOS. It was a parents' committee to prepare towards sports day for a well-known private school. So dressed in my casual boho chic style, sandals, sun hat, 
I addressed my fellow mother with equal casualness. Hi, I said. My name is Ekene. Instinctively, I reached out to shake her hand. Delicately, she grasped the tip of my fingers. Note that this was before coronavirus or Ebola. Hello, my name is Mrs. Obi. I had to immediately respect myself. I soon learned that to be a missus in Nigerian society required a certain kind of aloofness, a certain composure and decking in expensive weave and even more expensive designer handbag with high heels adorning skinny jeans, etc. I, on the other hand, clearly never got the memo. Inwardly, I wept at the girls trapped in women's bodies, girls who seemed unable to laugh with abandon, to be free to discover and explore life in an oyibo, childlike, unaffected way. Several years on, I still weep. My fellow women, Nigeria is difficult enough without our being our own worst enemies. We believe a lie about how women ought to be and how they ought to fit into this society and to prove this and to prove that to men and to ourselves. We're imprisoned by so much pretentiousness. My young male colleagues have been known to exclaim, Niger women can form, not knowing that it is they, the men and society that taught women to form. Life for an average Nigerian woman can seem like one continuous beauty pageant, take it from me, with men and even their fellow women as the judges. So they'll be asking, are you wife material, as I heard only just this afternoon? Could you pass as a yummy mommy or even a glam mama? Are you a superwoman, juggling home and work life in perfect equilibrium? When do we make time to be accepting of ourselves? No scorecards. In the words of someone I came across in the course of my reading only this week, Inyala Van Zont, Loving yourself has nothing to do with being selfish, self-centered, or self-engrossed. It means that you accept yourself for what you are. Loving yourself means that you accept responsibility for your own development, growth, and happiness. So my advocacy is simple. Woman, it is imperative that you make time to laugh and play. Give yourself permission to spend quality time on your own. Reading, writing, or even take the day off to catch up on much-needed sleep. Go for long walks and enjoy nature. Breathe in, breathe out, and marvel at the unique article of human creation that you are. With or without makeup, weave on, weave off. You're perfect just the way you are. Mm. That's a nice. lovely piece. If, if this was in TV, I would have, you know, scoot over and give you a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> you can do high five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so I, you know, I think that we women put a lot of pressure on ourselves trying to be superheroes and, you know, juggle everything, put, you know, take care of family, work and trying to maintain this work life balance. And I want to state that there is no such thing as a perfect work life balance. There is no such thing as, as, as that. So I think that, um, we need to take off the capes and embrace, you know, the, 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 where we are at that, particular, at that particular stage, knowing that there will always be something that will take priority over the other. So there's going to come a point in time where your children will take priority over your work. There's going to come a time where your work will take priority over children. So you just need to, you know, juggle which one is more important than the other and, you know, accept it. Don't blame yourself. No guilt for mm. anything. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I find think. That, I find that, um, you know, at the beginning of your advocacy, the point you raised about um, that distinction, um, I, I don't know what to call it, class distinction between the, the married, the unmarried, mm -hmm. um, that I find that a lot. I find it amusing sometimes, you know, the point you raised about, oh, I'm Mrs. Mm. As if it's some title you've earned and... And, and it puts, that's the thing where society will put a lot of, and I see it more, and it, it's, it's not so much, yes, the, 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 the men folk, we, we, we also lend to that discourse, but I find it that a lot more of women do that. Yeah. They try and, you know. Um, Why do you think that is? I, I, I don't know. I, it's, 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 it's a status, it's, it's, it's an attainment. Like, yeah, it's, it's like some achievement, like, exactly oh, I am now a missus. And therefore, you must give me this. Society must recognize that, mm. that I've won this battle of... I don't understand it. <laughs> you know, I, I want to have a colleague. Now, women... Sorry to cut okay. you short. They, they, they take this a bit too far because they also pass it on to their daughters. Yes. Is, is, the, is the reason why you have well-brought-up daughters with no well-brought-up sons to live up to them. So mm -hmm. there's already a pressure right from when they were small 
to be a wife material. material. Mm -hmm. So you teach them to do this, to do that, to be perfect for the man. And you, you never get that pressure, Graham. Did you get that pressure? No. I, 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 I didn't get that. Wow. I didn't get that. Maybe your pressure well, is different. I, I was, well, I would still say I'm, I'm much better because despite not having the same pressure as my uh, uh, siblings that were female, I still learned how to cook. I could do all those. In fact, I learned to make some dishes before my sisters did. Okay. Your mom taught you? Yes. Okay. She did that. Mm. You know, so it, those, those things, we still carry it on. And if we're not careful, our daughters are going to live exactly the same way that we are living right mm. now. Mm. Yes. Speaking on the Mrs. Achievement thing, you know, I actually, I, I once had a colleague who you could not address, even down to emails, you have to address her as Dear Mrs. Mrs. Dear Mrs. Okay, she actually told you yes, that. Yes, she actually, you know, she will confront you and Please, say, you address that. Dear Mrs. I mean, and so there was a case of a fellow married woman addressing her by her first name. Mm. And she says to the other married woman, no. I mean, with me, okay, I'm single, so you... You're so inferior to her. Oh, it's obvious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, with me, it was, okay, it was easier. But mm. then a fellow married woman addressing you with your first name, and you pick an offense with it and say, no, don't address yeah. me as my name. Address me as if it's some form of achievement. It's a club. It's mm. a club. It's yeah. a club. It's, yeah. I mean, the, the famous married we women club. We are on <laughs> I, I think it's a, We are on issues. No, you see, I think it's a, a sort of perverse way of fighting back at this whole male thing. Don't okay. forget, okay. the men are supposed to be cheats, running around with women up and down. You know, the no usual. security in your so, marriage. So what they've done is to retreat from a club that gives them strength. Okay. And that strength is the Mrs. Club. Mm. So what, what you don't realize is that people react to things in ways that initially don't look like that's what they are reacting to. Mm. But that's what these women are reacting to. They're trying to show that there's something because their husbands in the meantime are showing that, are not showing them that there's something okay. by their actions. Okay. So they got security. Yeah, yeah. so you know, um, but you know, I dare say that the funny thing is that most men don't think that cheating is actually disrespecting their wives. Mm. Very strange. Mm. Mm. Yes, they think it's just fun and games, mm. you know? I mean, the reason I even so, brought up the Yubu thing wasn't to slight, you know, black women. It's just mm. that I find that maybe, you know, in a way it links to what you're saying because even if you're not Nigerian and you're a black woman, you suffer from so much... Yeah. you know, bashing as yeah. a, you know, first as a woman, then as a, a black, black woman. woman. Mm. So you're sure. always having to prove that you're, you're worthy, kind yeah. of. Yeah. And so like, like you say, maybe that's yeah. the self-defense oh, that yeah. you're, you're doing, that you're, now you treat your fellow woman as if, you know, we must have our levels and I must still have my own level. And, you know, so it's, it's a pity. But I just feel that, you know, why I did this advocacy was I really do want to see we, my fellow women laugh yeah, just yeah, be yeah. Just in them yeah. 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 yeah, just be silly. Yeah. Be a bit just silly. silly. Yeah, be you know, because yeah. I used to wear flip flops on my school run, and they would look at me in my flip flops, and they were wondering if I was really my child was even in this school. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. that's why she was looking at me like, "Is this one worthy?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give you yeah. the tip of the finger. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm busy saying, "I can anyhow." Like I'm, you know, I'm not when, sure if I'm, you know. It also graduates to when they use children, mm -hmm. the little children, to also. Pump up their yeah. ego. Yeah. Well, yeah. How know, many children do you have? Children How you old are they? My children, they're so soft and yeah. you know, yeah. they're this and that. Meanwhile, yours are probably not, not maybe a bit hard. <laughs> I mean, the same woman, I, I think I may have said it here. The same woman, after she then followed me and I felt she followed me and she saw that my child was slightly more mature than my driver, then I had some a driver who came. She followed me and she saw the car and then the I had a, a useful looking car. You know, things are different <laughs> now. So the next day she saw me, she said, Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> now you have come into her style. Yeah. Now she can accept yeah. me to her inner circle. I'm like, oh. But you know, if you got closer to her eventually, she would probably advise you. That I should step up that, my that game. You need to step I should up package your game. myself yeah, better. Exactly. Why not be yourself? I mean. Yeah, we need to be freer with ourselves. Okay. Well, there's certainly comfort and solidarity in a shared identity. Sandra, my sister in arms, takes things further. And she's actually going to take us back to move us forward after the break. So take it away, Sandra. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization
organisation should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. You're watching The Advocates on Plus TV Africa. In commemorating an occasion, it is profitable to chat the footprints of past notable figures. I'm asking you not to forget the history. The month of March is widely recognized as Women's Month and sees a swarm of hashtags and images filling the media space, all in commemoration of the International Women's Day. And with each year brings its own unique theme, this year being each for equal. Scrolling through my feed, just about everyone had something to say with words like women power, gender equality, etc. And even the younger generation, my generation, joined in the frenzy, some of, which, some of whom I fear may not have a proper understanding of the themes or why there is an International Women's Day in the first place. So I invite you to take a stroll down history with me. Not like I was present in the days, but as it was told my mother and experienced by the mothers before hers. Women had zero powers, suffered marginalization, lacked political willpower, and overall, lacked seats at the table of men. In essence, women were nothing but baby-making machines and tools for homestead responsibilities. Thus, the International Women's Day had its origination from protests and resilient activism towards women's liberation. Let's come home. The history of women's rights in Nigeria is one of struggle, of protest by strong women of old, the likes of Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, the, who was described as the doyen of female rights and famous for leading the Abel Kuti Women's Revolt of 1940. Somehow, all we were thought growing up was that she was the first woman to drive a car in Nigeria. Also of notable reference is Margaret Ekpo, Bola Kufariji, and many more who led revolt and delivered political suffrage to Southern women in 1958. While it wasn't until 1978, 20 years after, that their Nigerian counterparts received rights to vote. But what do we have today? Northern states still live in compliance with the Sharia laws, which limit women in many aspects. We are still held by cultural and limiting beliefs about a woman's place in society. And it also seems like the gender activists end their activism on our media pages alone. Our society's defini current definition of a strong woman is one who has undergone severe hardships of poverty, illiteracy, or domestic violence, and is still able to raise her kids. I am not intending to demean such strength. But it is rather disheartening that the caliber of women we have today are being celebrated globally than they are at home. Yes, I'm talking about the Forbes list of Africa women, then our own Ngozi Okonjo Iwela, who now has a seat at the South African Presidential Economic Advisory Council. Yet, Nigeria can boast of only 6% women representation as her government seat as against Rwanda of 61%. I will at this point beckon on us, just as Ekene has said, woman to woman, it's time to rejuvenate the labels of our shiro's past. Let's build capacity for the task ahead. Be involved in economic conversations, increase your political participation, and if they fail to invite us to the table, it's time we create our own table and take our seats. <laughs> you know, let, 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 let me say, this is very interesting, <clears throat> but I, I have a slightly, I'm, not, I'm also going historically, I'm not trying to uh, create another debate, but mm. I think that the influence of, of um, Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Islam, has affected this, the balance of power, uh, especially in our society. Because historically, you know, the African woman uh, did not need permission to sit on the table. I mean, if you look at even traditional institutions like uh, from Ibo land, where I'm from, <coughs> excuse me, the Umwada, mm, 
quite powerful. Extremely powerful, you know. Um, and and they didn't need they don't need any permission to be to sit at the table. Oh. They they actually create the table. They allow men in. Mm. Um, and, and society. And society. And, but, with but I think with you know the rise of the new Christianity and the dominance of the religions, um, um, it's sort of because Western religion, um, you know, and their own history. These guys went to war, they were built fundamentally for violence, they understand it. So they kept women aside. I want what to is slightly, what I want is to religion slightly, Western? Um, well, I'm saying, but it's, it, it, it's become, I mean, they've adopted it. They've, no, they've adopted it. And it has its influence because yeah. traditionally, the African mm -hmm. women, they didn't, I mean, they didn't need permission. Um, let, let and we adopted their politics. We adopted. We adopted their politics. Yeah. We adopted the religion. We adopted it's, the culture. It's the interpretation and of what we adopted. Again, back to thinking yeah. for ourselves. Because, I, like you were talking, when I listened to you, I thought of the about women's riot. Yeah. 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 And when she talked of that, how yeah. we 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 end our own activism on social media. So the problem is how we have interpreted whatever it is we've adopted. That's where I'm taking yeah. it from. Because a lot of times, these women, when I read about the Abba Women's Riot, I was so impressed. It was mm -hmm. just very spontaneous. Mm -hmm. These people were coming to tax her, and she said, would you tax your, your widowed mother like that? So she carried herself to another woman, and they ganged up. And even though they lost 50 women in that riot, they just decided that they were not going to let these people keep taking money from them. And I think even the one you referred to, uh, yeah, Kuti's mother, was yeah. over taxation yeah. as well. They just said, we've had enough. But sometimes we go on social media, we say no more, no more. But we don't actually step into the ring. Into the so we feel we've played our part by social media. But there, where they didn't have social media, they didn't have... They, so when I say misinterpretation, is that even the Abrahamic religions, you have strong women, like yeah. the prophetess Deborah, you have women who stood spontaneously. But if you translate that to mean, maybe you read women, be whatever it is you're reading. Well, so how, many, how many of those women are we talking about? I think right. it, for them, for there to question. have been you know, even one or two, that's a very men that question. anybody could have seen in that religion, yeah. uh, in permission to step into to step the, in. Well, but it, so it depends on how you translate it. That's that, really that, what that, I'm that's saying. That's a way to look at it. Mm. Uh, you can decide to take your example in those strong women that appear there. But when you really dig, dig into those religions, you have situations where women are not even counted. So they're talking about the, the, the population of a place. And you count the men, and those are, that is what you keep in the records. Okay. You know, so it shows um, some sort of relegation, probably cultural. Some of the culture of those places also entered into the beliefs. There is, there is no way you can totally separate what people believe and then the religion that they came to adopt. I can't speak you know. for Islam, but yeah. I understand. Yeah. So th th those things are there. And I, I asked a question very recently, still on this matter. That is it an accident that since 1774, even America has not produced a female president? Mm. Is, it, is it a coincidence? Yeah, I don't know why that. Is. No. Oh. Because even in I Nigeria, where we had a female president candidate, it was ironic. It was just Only one, one vote. Person, one vote. <laughs> that must, you so that we don't actually for. even believe in we our women be, folk. True. That's, that's actually But I believe, I really believe I, that the I, day I, the I women folk I rise this, up. This culture, this, uh, you know, for me, I, I strongly believe that, 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 um, you know, this religion that we've adopted um, had an influence on, on, on the balance of power with regards to how uh, women were treated. Um, and I think that, that the, the narrative is changing, and which is clearly very wonderful, because we're now realizing that, I mean, so many of the countries where, where you have predominant strong religions like that, as, you, as Milan was saying, don't even count women. I mean, in some countries, women are just uh, being allowed to drive. Can you imagine that? Um, so You're just, looking at Islam. You don't confuse the two, though. But anyway. Well, we keep track of our history, whereas you keep track of us with your feedbacks. And on the complete edition, is Nigeria truly divided? Annie Am says, Sister Ikene, if your children can't speak our beautiful and adorable Igbo language, then they are not evil. <laughs> Annie Am, um, it's that interesting. They obviously forgot to seek your permission. Also on the episode, also on this episode, Florence Oke Alison says, so who is Shekau? If Boko Haram is not Islamic, how much have you been paid for this publicity? I think you, Libras, and your colleagues are just propagating and just much like the ones you criticize. Hmm. Florence, how did you arrive at that conclusion? Perhaps you need to interact with some of this Islamic faith and to understand if they identify with Boko Haram or not. On last week's episode, titled Change or Confusion, 
the Nigerian people decide. Shiviko simply says, amazing video. It was really good. Thank you, Shiviko. Glad you found it beneficial. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocates NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocates NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocates. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, check a takes on the matter of those previously thought as the untouchables. That is, until more recent news puts this view in perspective. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, it does. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Following the news these days should come with the caution to stay one step ahead of the surface narrative. A bit like playing chess. Game of Thrones. Sanusi Lamido Sanusi has just been dethroned as Emir of Kano after over four years and a running battle with the state governor, Ganduje, himself now referred to as Gandola over a bribery video of him that went viral only in Nigeria. Sanusi, who was once suspended as governor of Central Bank in the tenure of the troubled good luck Jonathan, is clearly a man who speaks up and gets counted. He only a few days ago questioned the economic sense of the current government in borrowing money to build railway lines to Kano. There is no viable economy in Kano, and Nigeria is itself in quite a bit of an economic mess with troubled times ahead globally. Ganduje, in a bid to whittle down the power base of Sanusi's previous position, created four more emirates from within Sanusi's kingdom and has since elevated the former emir of Bichi to become the new substantive Islamic ruler of Kano. Sanusi has in the meantime been supposedly banished to Nasarawa, but Kaduna State has enthroned him with two positions, including chancellor of the state university. This is just like musical chairs. Sanusi will no doubt continue his life of advocacy, especially for change in northern Nigeria, for women advancement, for education, for many more of the poor, eradication of the backward Almajiri system, basically rocking the northern boot. But there's something I miss, like there's another layer of plans to the removal of this man from a position that never really suited his temperament a man who Nigeria would have seen more suitable for great public office or service, presidential material, actually. We can learn from this experience that at a time when evil and wrongdoing become the norm, the hero is actually he or she who seemingly loses out, who pays a price to maintain a stand, who damns the consequences and acts for greater collective good. While Major General Buhari has rushed to congratulate the new Emir, let us not assume that this is tacit support for the turn of events. For now, let's consider that there's still more thrones to be thrown Sanusi's way. <laughs> That's why it's a game of thrones, right? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> game of thrones. Well, I, I thought I should chip, chip in something about economic viability in Kano. Kano mm. is actually a very important uh, economic city. Uh, it has been the headquarters of the Trans-Sahara trade for centuries um, as, as a banker several years ago. When you're looking for cash in Nigeria, call Kano. They'll move it to you. So I just thought I should mention that. But I, I, having said that... <laughs> okay, as a, sorry, where, today, where are they getting the cash from? Trade. Trade, actually. All the way from 
Burkina Faso. Yeah. Okay. They come to trade grain in, in Kano. Kano. Just money, money exchange. So money, yeah, it's cash exchange. No goods. Yeah, the no goods. The, the goods are here. They come all the way from all those countries above Niger. Nigeria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you come and buy grain. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay, millet. Uh, millet but how, how much of these things of really are? How much grains do Even we, leather. Do we, do we hundred leather. years ago, the amount yeah, of money Kano was making from but leather. Is it the same now? You're, you're referring to a time mm. when... It, it, it's, it's still the same. same. Even, it's still even, the same, even actually. Now, the, the internal generated revenue of Kano State, I'm not talking of allocation, okay. it's more than some three or four states in the south okay. put together, depending on which state you pick. Okay. Mm. Interesting. You okay. know that, for instance, the leather industry has been uh, killed in that area by been given over to no 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 it's not so much that that's one day no it's, but but no no really it's basically to do with exports there is export going on but it's not benefiting nigeria or nigerians properly it's basically been an arrangement with chinese and they basically just ship out this stuff and we got we, we don't it's like the mining problems that we have in the country so, individuals mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yes benefiting. so we don't know what's going on with that those are the sorts of things that are happening in kano that's a shame. nothing much is happening in kano to actually profit nigeria i mean this trade you're talking about how, what's the volume and what does it add to our, our revenue i don't know I mean, you'd be surprised yeah I, I i still believe that kano remains a, a you know Scent of commerce as far as the northern yeah. northern part of this country is concerned, and it's it's a very important strategic state. Um, um, but with regards to the Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. um, I, I let me just say that I don't think anyone will any serious observer will say they were surprised um, that that Sanusi got kicked out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as you said, his temperament was not suited Super. for that position. Yeah. Um, it was clear. I mean, we mm -hmm. even even. Even, uh, even as the head of the CBN, you could tell that mm -hmm. he had this, vocal. you know, very vocal. Mm -hmm. um, so he's, 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 he's rather, he's a brilliant person. You know, his mind is his, his, his such a cerebral person. But I, I think that you have this fight within the traditional institutions, um, not even to talk about the religious part of it, but where he was rocking the boat. Mm -hmm. But we need people like that. I was going to say who can who can say when things. Say he's not it, suited. I know, but he's perfect he, for what um, because no, I don't see, think there's, there's, yeah. that we want to. There's a dissonance. Our there's a dissonance. There's a dissonance between you know. It's just like having the queen yeah. in 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 the UK. You want to see the queen saying things. Mm -hmm. No, no. Some 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 other persons within the institution within the monarchy can say that. It's like our. Prince Harry that wants to go but off on his own. In a situation but where the, we, the people you, who should be doing it are not doing it, then you need someone like him to do it. Because at least he started the then, conversation on the system. But remember system, the balance of power. Again, again understand, you understand that Several. you are clearly... We go back to that. I don't know if you saw the video circulating just recently about Abu Bakarimi saying then he had yes. this issue with Adebayo yes. as well when yes. Adebayo was, uh, was the, was the yes. emir. So, yes. saying, uh, you know, the staff of office is given to you yes. by the state government. Yeah. As an employee they, 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 of the You're an employee yeah. of the state. Yeah, they sign the check. They give you money. Yeah. So you need to know that, um, again, it's about, I like his advocacy. Of course. And it's necessary. But I think that um, we, we can also not deny that his temperament was in conflict. I want to look at it from the, another perspective. I want to say, because of the, the way Nigeria is, we do need people like him. We need mavericks like him. And, and my problem is not even him. My problem is the fact that people like Ganduje can checkmate people like him. I'm really appalled mm, that we have mm. bullies like right. Ganduje in positions of power where they can checkmate people like him. I'm, and and I'm, I'm totally unimpressed with a lot of the governors we have who are using their power, abusing their power. We're not even satisfied that they have the, the, the caliber to even be in that office in the to first be place. Office. So because they have, so, so my problem is with those people. My problem is not even with him. Mm -hmm. We need more people like him, however okay. they manifest themselves in True. the public space. I, I totally agree with you that we need people like, like um, I you know, so to have the but you know, he brought up. I, I want mm -hmm. to liken this now, like bringing it home to my profession, talking about the judiciary. It is a very, you know, sacred institution and only as sacred as it performs. Oh, well, perform, only as well, true. But we have, we have cows. I mean, if you go to the courtroom, we have we have very sound judges, but you don't see them airing their opinion on you know issues of the public. Mm. So you liken that to you know the um, traditional rulers, they are as sacred as that. I'm not faulting him. His advocacy is good. We need him, 
but for the position he occupies, it wasn't it wasn't suited. So now I'm saying this as a situation. Say, oh, I'm saying this as a situation. Couldn't we just tolerate one out of ten? It's, it's Trump, it's not a I traditional it's American it's president. The funny thing sacred, where has this sacred gotten us in Nigeria? Everybody is, keeps I'm quiet this as and they don't an speak up. And things are going bad. I'm seeing this so as an opportunity no that, the, you know, just like... The judiciary is turning itself upside the down the people are rejects would eventually become the chief cornerstone. You mentioned in your advocacy, like, a presidential material. I'm not advocating for anything, but let's just watch and see how it goes. I think you should seek political power. To really? Make yeah, they said she should run because, for governor. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just she, has, political she power. has everything. Uh, because, you know, uh, the advocacy here you, is like Here you have this narrative. Nigeria you have the intellect. You have the, needs, and you know what's wrong in like You should him. run for office because yeah. you know not, that the power of... Not in a, a position that's going to cage him. It takes a politician to win elections. I don't think it will win. That's the problem. He's not a politician. That's the truth. Ah, where are we left with? <laughs> <laughs> well, where some may have a challenging time keeping up with the political narrative, Balanghua adeptly follows the money trail and interprets the indices for us after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. The measure of how serious a matter is can usually be linked to the price tag it attracts that Economic Advisory Council. The global economy is in trouble. Our part of the world woke up a few days ago to hear the news that oil price slumped 30% in early trading in Asia, testing the $30 per barrel mark. There were fears it may even go lower. Fortunately, it didn't, as it closed at about $34. For Nigeria, that $34 is already a disaster when stacked beside our crude benchmark of $57. At $34, 40% of the income we expected from oil this year is wiped off. It could get worse, as there's a glut already in the market such that even at the rock bottom price, we may still not find buyers. Remember, there was already a deficit in the budget, which we will be borrowing to cover. That gap has just widened. As if that was not enough, because oil represents about 90% of our foreign exchange earnings, the crash in oil prices have implication for our foreign reserves and by extension, our exchange rate. Like they say, when it rains, it pours. Capital is projected to move from oil-exposed currencies and economies to safety, thus further putting pressure on the exchange rate. He that is down needs fear no fall. There are currently critical infrastructure works being handled by Chinese nationals in Nigeria. A lot of them travel to China for the new year and have been locked down in China due to the raging coronavirus. Even if they want to come back now, I'm not sure we are ready to receive them. Manufacturers have ordered raw materials and spare, and all these are tied down in China, which means production will be negatively hit as factories stock out unnecessary raw materials and spares. The same goes for general commerce, because China is a major source of the product offered in our various markets. Nigeria is also not shielded from the economic woes of the aviation industry. We are linked to the problem in the global tourism industry, or the fallout of major lockdown across the world, including the entire country of Italy. While the impact of the global economic woes on the oil price is easy to see, what about the impact on the fairly more complex non-oil sector? 
Have we analyzed the effect of the expected result of the implementation of the finance bill? I'm sure the new boss at FIRS is worried already about how he will meet his revenue target. Wait a minute, is this not also the right time to remove full subsidy? The times are trying and the decisions complex. But the beauty of it is that we have a team of wise men constituted into the Economic Advisory Committee. They are what we need and I hereby advocate that this is the time to deploy them into what they know to do best. We can ride this storm with minimal bumps, and the time to get into it is now. I don't think that um, we are quite um, ready um, <laughs> to even understand the complexities. Oh, wow. Um, no, I mean, you can, you can tell this by just listening to the, 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 some of the pronouncements and narratives are coming from the people in, 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 in charge of the economy. Um, I, I do agree that there are very many wise men and women in the advisory, but okay. since there were, you know, one of the beautiful things about policy, um, smart policy, is that you can, you can sort of anticipate what's going to happen. Um, there was no sense of anticipation okay. within the, you know, I don't even think over the last two, three months, mm -hmm. right. you know, even some of the conversations around uh, what are we going to do? Uh, what's the economic impact of the finance bill? Yeah. You don't, you, there was no discussion around it. It's like we have power, so we're going to do this. We have the National Assembly that can, you know, rubber stamp our decisions, right. so we've done it. But what is the critical thinking? What's the impact analysis? Yeah. Wait, do you hear, what the, I mean, Okay, let's not, I know that every time we say this, so oh, okay, fine, um, we're bringing an example of people in, in the UK or in America or in China, but you see there are conversations, conversations. That, we're, that, 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 yeah. that we're not having. Yeah. Yesterday, um, I listened, tuned in to listen to the, the meeting that the CBN organized. The uh, um, yeah, yeah, and for me, to get to that. yes. that's not, <laughs> yes. that's actually, Jamboree. that's just, <laughs> There's things I can say. Why is it there. a jamboree? <laughs> Why do you say it's a jamboree? Um, oh. Even look at the the body language of the people, right. the photographs and the. Yes. It, it didn't. Well, it business as usual. That these people really understand, understand I, yeah. what's going on. Yes, True. I absolutely agree with you. You should have seen a fearless uh, um, com comportment. He said that we are that he. In fact, he said there's no problem. Okay. How can oh, he wow. say that? He's the governor of Central Bank. <laughs> We're looking at these prices. We're staring at them in the do you know face. What dollar, do you know what the dollar has just gone between <laughs> yesterday and today? It's about 380. Mm. Climbing to 390. Mm. In the black market? Yes. yes. Yeah, to buy dollar. Black market, yes. I, I guess it's that critical thing and, keep and, coming and back I can to tell you it. here that it's yeah. going to go, it's it's going going go, to go all the way. Wanted, no. I just want to take on some of what you said. I, I think, and just re-emphasize what you're saying, is the critical thinking, but not because he pointed out that we have some very wise men and women. So you sort of have to ask, the people that appointed these wise men and women, what was in their mind? Yeah. Why did you put them there? Are they figureheads? Because my problem is not that, I mean, it's a problem, but it's not a problem for today in a sense that we've already accepted that you want to chop but at least have the, the sense to delegate the work to those who are going to, you know, do, as in nurture the cow that will, or the chicken that will lay the golden egg. Because golden egg, yes. why should yes. you be sitting, and that, that for me is the craziness of where we are, is that you're in a, a difficult situation, and when you use you know, expressions not, like the time to okay, solve it is now. We're not talking about cutting costs of governance. We're not talking about removing, that's the first thing, okay, we're going to deal with subsidy. Yeah. We talked about, well, let's, let's remove subsidy. Yes, right. Cost Let's of governance. This, like, cost of governance. It's already a heavy news around NNPC that, our neck. I was listening to the MD of the NNPC talking about uh, uh, we should prepare for hard times, yes. that 80 cargoes could not find buyers. Yes. 80 cargoes of oil, of oil could yes. not find buyers. 90% of our foreign exchange Meanwhile, is listen driven. to this. Just a month ago, less than a month ago, they employed 2,000 fresh staff to NNPC. Right, right, right. To do what? Thank you. Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm saying, anticipating. Right, right. You, 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 and you employing new people to fill... So you have government agencies that are employing thousands of people. So we take it that they don't I, want I, I to do the right so thing. So cost of governance, you're not reducing it. And then you're talking about... Refuse to attend, the or go decline to attend the government. They, they, they feel it's just... Because that is what... It's, it's, it's more or less like um, somebody trying to use them to um, validate yes. some things that might not necessarily be part of the, their own agenda. 
most of the issues that were meant to be discussed at that event, they have already provided professional advice via the right quarters on it. So if, if they have come to attend something like that and you put them on the spot, they might even be clashing with some of the political opinions in that space. That undermines their own So my question people. is, what do you do yeah. with people who don't want to do the right thing? Because that's where we're at now. We keep I, because I see, I, see, I, see the fa I see what happens when you're in an organization where you, you have a, mix, a mixed multitude and you have some people who want to work and you have some people who are just there. You know, if you don't um, unbundle those ones, they're going to affect the morale yeah, of everyone the, the else. The so, so, so how do we now get this ship to work? Because we have we, the men, we have the women, we have the intelligence, but it's not being utilized because some people... We keep shouting people, about it. Shouting you, see, about it. You, you see, at the end of the day, um, political will trumps anything. Right. You know, it's, a, it's acceptance at the highest level of, of mm -hmm. governance mm -hmm. to say, you know, um, I think this changes. We're going to do this changes. We're going to accept this advice. And, and you will see it flow down the line. I don't think that um, we're in that environment yet. Maybe we're when... Not, we haven't suffered enough. No, no, no. Maybe when uh -huh. it hits us... That's not the right word. You <laughs> and maybe, you know, <laughs> part of the time is now. And yeah, the they're problem not with our brand of governance is that people in power and, and governance, I mean, I used to... Have, that we, 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 we just isolated from the, the realities of consequences. We're, we're, there's this isolation, this is bubble that we are, we're in. You know, so if my car is fueled, if the price goes up, I just get more money right. for my office to protect, to insulate protect myself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, so if the cost of air travel goes up, I just get, get more, more money. money. Yeah. So there's this insulation um, that we have and we just pretend, okay, fine, you know, we're not feeling the pulse. Mm. And, and I think that it goes back to people, the common man, all of us in society beginning to raise our voices. Yes. That look, Make storm is coming. Yeah. So this thing about riding, we're not ready. Exactly. To ride yeah. the storm. Oh, we're not ready. We're not. we're not ready. But the people, the team that will help us ride the storm I'm is there. right there. <laughs> that is my worry. With intelligence to do it. With intelligence. So, so we're not even saying that we do can't it. still at, get out of trouble. Look at the South African, look at the South African economy went into recession. Mm. You saw the steps that the, the yeah, government the, 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 the yeah. government took immediately. Yeah. The, 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 the finance minister, the mm -hmm. governor of the, the central bank, the president the himself, you could see, yeah. Yeah. You do, see the do, steps. Do we not want to wait till we go into a recession? You see the steps they're taking. We've been, we we been into 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 <laughs> recession before and come out, and and we're come out. out of it. And we haven't learned but anything from that experience. Yes. And we're, we're glorifying so. 2 point something, 2.2% growth. Yes, yes, I was going to say that. Your population is growing at 6 7%. Your economy is growing at 2 And you're saying, yeah, we're... There's some positive news. You could tell we're not ready. So we keep making noise. Wow. <laughs> a crucial aspect of our advocacy is to ignite timely interventions. As the saying goes, a stitch in time saves nine. We continue to raise the alarm as you team up with us. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash theadvocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Remember to join The Advocate again next week, same time, as we press on towards a better society. Till then, it's bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, really it, 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 I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.